you you've heard uh, a portion of the report that she has been uh, bringing up there um according to that report it shows that there was an ied we know that schools <laughs> could barely resume even if parents wanted their children to go to school so much has been happening and this was predicted or should i say anticipated by barista Mbisia last week commander willie and that's where i want you to come in please what do you have to tell us about that yes uh comrade paddy uh, director paddy i wish to bring to your attention uh, in a time of war you're not going to see pictures people uh, feasting, feasting and dancing and drinking and, and anything in a time of war people will be dying for one reason or the other at this type of, of war time in Amazonia and this type of situation, we should not be contemplating or speculating. At any time when you're in a house and then there's a, a breakage in your house, automatically there's an intruder. When an intruder is in your house, you have all those type of uh, challenges. If you have a, a small room or a big room, you have your addresses inside, and then you come, things are flipped upside down. It means that there's an intruder, and who's an intruder? A lot of people come around. They have come to a land, they are killing us in many, many uh, ways that they can, they, that they can do. When it comes to IED like this on the ground, the best thing is to send a fact-finding mission to go find out who is doing what. You can say is this or is that. At war time, you no know, point fingers because the, the bullet have no color. When the bullet comes, it comes to kill. And um, I hear you talking about school. I would like to bring something to your attention. At this time of war in Amazonia, our independence does not depend on school. What are people going to school or oh, they stay at home? That, that does not bring us our independence. We are fighting to survive, to be alive. That is what we are fighting for, to be alive. Because they are killing us. They are not killing us because we are going to school. They are killing us because they, they have come to colonize us and we don't want them to bag us up. That's why they are killing us. So when you people say uh, school should start, school should not go, they are not going, they are not. School is not a priority at this moment. The priority is to keep our people alive and their property. You have to be alive to do anything in this world. For some of us who have gone to school, we are educated. President Sarko is a doctor, for God's sake. Why don't you give him the, the chance to manage his country, Ambazonia? You want to educate the other ones who are not educated, and then you give them what, what, what chance? Barista Fru John Saw is here. He's a barrister, for God's sake. Barista Master is a barrister. You yourself, you have degrees. Why can Cameroon government not give you? You already have the education. What have they given to you? They should leave us alone so we can manage ourselves. We're going to school those who want to go to school, and in any way or any other that means. Let me tell you something. When it comes to this year, school, let like folks say school, school, school. In, I think, 1955 or 19, what, what they call the French Accord that was signed in, in Brazzaville. Ambassador was not part of that, that French Accord that they come to educate people on, on, on school. Number two, all the teachers in Ambazona, they are there illegally. They are operating illegally. If you're a teacher in Ambazona, you're operating illegally because you're not supposed to be there. You're under French government payroll. French government recruited you, trained you, and it's paying you. You see, so Ambazona government have nothing to do with you, whether you're a teacher or not. Ambazona government is fighting to keep the people alive. President Sarko say he's fighting for his people to be alive first. You have to be alive to talk to your president. You have to be alive to talk to your sister. You have to be alive to talk to your whoever. So when you are talking about uh, schools to go, schools should not go on, the, 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 the problem here is for us to be alive. They are killing us, not because we went to school. Those who went to school, they went and killed them. Those who stay home, they, they, they came and catch them and still take them to jail. What do you want us to do? We have to fight. That's the only thing we have in our hand to fight. In Boya, they are doing kare kare, they are killing people. Those people who, are, who, have, who have been killed in Boya and who have been caught for Kale Kale, they were supposed to go to school, right? But they have caught them. So we are talking of, of what here? We are war. You are talking of this. We expect this all on the ground because we are taking back our country. We are taking it. That's all. That's, that's a, a great one there. I remember that brings something to my attention. In one of a uh, uh, of, of, uh, uh, forum that I am involved with, someone was blackmailing because that's what proxies and enablers in cameroon do all the time blackmailing the people of south in cameroons in their effort to defend their sovereignty and integrity and dignity so they always make us to feel like oh you're killing your own people you're doing this and i told that person i'm not a medical practitioner but common sense tells us that when a foreign body enters your body and it is operated out even now in the modern world where anesthesia reduces the pain, they, there's, there's puncturing of the tissue, there is an oozing of blood, and some tissues will have to be destroyed
to fix the tissue and the entire organism. So this is a normal process that goes through when you're trying to destroy a hegemony. Barista Fru, please try to be brief. Yes, uh, Paddy, I, I, I want to remark that that explosion took place in the city of my birth and yours. And we know exactly where Nguyen is and which part of Nguyen was affected. And I want to say that it took place after the lockdown. Yeah. And I would, I would, I would go on to say it was a reaction from the successful lockdown by the enemy. Let me explain. Look, that IED, the IED, the what we call generally called popcorn, does not sound like the explosions that took place in Quen. Those explosions were planted there by La Republic de Cameroon from their arsenal in Bamenda Station. And they, they planted it so that it can kill people in the market because people were now free to do their business, go to the market and do their things. So La Republic got so curious that we succeeded. So they decided to kill our people. They went to Quen and planted that their type as the type of because it exploded about uh, there were series of explosions about six to seven. Pam 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 pam. That is not how our popcorn functions. Our popcorn, what you call the EID of the of a, a weapon of choice for the Federal Republic of Ambazonia is a one-time blow. Pam. It was not our ASA that planted it. It was the enemy that planted it in response to the successful lockdown. And they wanted to make a, a they, they wanted to give us a message that they cannot tolerate the success of that lockdown. And they did it in the market so that people should die. And they blame it on us. And that's what they are doing. And that's if you hear the various people talking about it, it's like they are looking at it happening there because of the war. It was after the fact. It was after the fact of the lockdown if, that that if explosion I, took place. If I'm if I'm agreeing with you, um, if I'm agreeing with you, it it is a strategy from the enemy to paint a bad image, which is something we understand yes. they have done often. Correct. And like, and like the undaunted, unfortunately we missed Onye. I wish we had her complete that report. Don't have time to bring her back for that. But mm -hmm. uh, like undaunted reported, uh, Cameroon does that all the time, just so that they will, they will say that we are killing our own people. Uh, um, people. What do you have to say about that? Well, I don't know, but uh, citizens sometimes are complex. This is my take about it. What happened at the Queen Market? Whoever planted the bomb, whatever thing you call it, or explosive, it only goes to vindicate our, our viewpoint that there's generalized insecurity in Ambazonia. You will not get to this conclusion until you look at the thing. What was happening in Quen? It must, Quen is far away from Boya. Tie it together with what was happening in Boya, the, the same few days, arresting people in Bonacanda, arresting people left and right, shooting everywhere. It is only a vindication of the fact that there is no security on the ground. Who is the cause of this insecurity? I don't want to go into who planted it. I saw the communique from the prefet of Bamenda, of Mezam. He did not mean as much as venture to say that Amber, Amber Boys did it. According to him, whoever did it was on un, unidentified un, un government. That is his official version of the story. They didn't say Ambassador did it. He simply said unidentified gunmen. The person who came out to say, oh, it is Ambazina who did this, me, me, me for. 
And I don't know him. I don't know how he have communicated her so much times. The government, our opponent, the official communicate did not accuse Amazonia. But again, let me remind ourselves that the lockdown, what we call the lockdown, was not a ceasefire. It was never a ceasefire. It was an aspect of the struggle. While the lockdown was on, the war was going on. It was not a ceasefire. I think I've had the opportunity to stay here and say that. Look, the war has come from Gorilla War to Urban Gorilla Warfare. What's happening in the center of Bamenda when it's in the middle of town? What is happening in Boya, in Moya, is the middle of town. What uh, Okala Bila said and other actors, it, they live in town. It's to show that the thing is totally out of their own control. We have now transitioned from guerrilla warfare in the jungles to urban guerrilla warfare. Whoever did it, I take credit for it because it shows that there's generalized insecurity. And as Willie said there, is that the environment you want your child to go to school? Is that the environment you want to go and sit in the market and say your cocoa and say your plantains? It is not. It is not. There's nothing normal there. Could the governor of Pamenda, Lele Afrik, send his wife to cross uh, Gwen to go buy something for him around there in Gwen Market in, the, in that climate? He would not do it. He would not even send his own child. And so it is a vindication of our position that there's generalized insecurity on the ground, which according to me and a few others, the struggle has transitioned from guerrilla warfare what they call the amber terrorism in bushes, to urban guerrilla warfare. The urban guerrilla is unidentifiable because I don't know who that person is. And I said it sometime this week. I don't know any country in the world that has been able to defeat an urban guerrilla warfare. When the warfare transition into urban centers and began an urban guerrilla warfare, the challenger, in this case, the Republic, the Republic of Cameroon, must go down and negotiate it out. Because according to uh, Okala Bilai, they don't know what to do again. These are both them. They have lost all what they could do militarily. So whoever put that thing there, kudos to us for promoting us. If the Republic did it, they helped us to promote our view that there's generalized insecurity on the ground. That's just the bottom line. And with this, again, I said, we have in Yaoundé there, we talk of international community. The international community is completely represented in Yaoundé. You have the American ambassador there. We have the French embassy there. We have the UK. We have the Russians. We have all these things right inside Yaoundé. These things where government is responding with the uncommon case. Are these ambassadors not aware of them? They are aware of them. Can they do something to help us? Of course. They are now at the United Nations. I said this sometime this week. I don't know where everybody got it. Now, these members and other countries are the United Nations General Assembly. They see this thing. We don't even know what Philomonia would say. But even if Philomonia was to stand there and say, well, everything is going back to normal, would they believe him? These countries have the power to, 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 to cause it to come on the agenda of the, National, of the General Assembly. These very countries who are all in Yaoundé, China, France, Russia, UK, and the uh, and the United States. These are the five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. They have the power, they own only. They have the power to bring this thing to the Security Council. And so it, it vindicates our position. Yeah, well, I, don't I, I don't want us to diversify the argument. I just wanted us to examine what is happening on the ground and be as brief as possible. I think there is another school of thought uh, that agrees with you, Barista Ambesia, that whatever happens right now, only underlines the fact and the caution that the government is giving to the people that it is unsafe to go to school. Ambazonia is at war, and that's what Cameroon is trying to, to deny. So, but, but there's a technical aspect that Barista Fru brought in. The fact that Cameroon would use their proxies to inflict pain on the civilian population so that we as a government or as a people are being sabotaged that's an aspect we cannot forget
to highlight as we're talking. But it's the fruit. Apparently, you want to react. Please make that reaction. Yes, let, let, let me react. Let me react. I, I wait. That thing happened in Bamenda, where that is my town. I had to be anything that happens in Bamenda. I try to find out. I made a series of contacts around Quen, and they were able to tell me that if every finger is pointed at La Republic the Cameroon soldiers at up station, that they planted a series of small, small bombs the night before the market. And the soul soldiers come go around that at particular area the night before the market. And I'm saying that La Republic of Cameroon, I, I don't I don't disagree with what uh, Barista is saying. It, it, it shows the insecurity that we're living. But we must point a finger to the end to whoever did it. La Republic of Cameroon is our enemy. The Amazonian State Army will not take away six lives after 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 the lockdown. And, 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 the, and, 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 the, and the explosions and the explosions, the explosions are not are not the, the type of explosions that uh, that the Amazonian State Army uses. Agreed. A series of explosions. Undoubted actually reported that we, from their reports, they have never seen the state army targeting civilians in that manner, not in, even in any manner. And they, yes. what they did, similar to what the vigilante which is a proxy of Cameroon as well. The vigilante of Galajilo did in do in uh, during 11 February. 